If you're ready to unlock more potential from your Airtable interface, look no further than this video because we are jumping into four new features that Airtable just released, including a button field within your interface that will allow you to take action on particular records. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you save up to 20 hours of your time every week with no code tools. If that sounds too good to be true, it's probably because you haven't started leveraging the power of automation in no code. If you wanna learn the fundamental building blocks of how automation can take away all those repetitive tasks that you do and just perform those tasks in the background so that you get to focus on high value tasks, well, I invite you to join me for my webinar training. You can check out the fundamental building blocks of no code automation by signing up at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. And I'll send you all the information you need in order to start building your own automations today. But without further ado, let's hop on into this video and we have got to talk about the four new features that Airtable just pushed out within the last few days that all have to do with enhancing those interfaces. So on my screen here, if you're not already aware, Airtable.com slash what's new is the place where you can go to see the most up-to-date version of Airtable and get feedback directly from their product team in terms of what has been pushed out and what is being released. And here you'll see that four of the different topics on my screen all have to do with interface designer. They include the calendar element, which we'll be talking about, duplicating an interface, duplicating an element, and lastly, that button element. So duplicating an element and duplicating an interface is a feature that we've long been wanting because it sure makes building a heck of a lot faster. These two things operate exactly as you would expect. When you're inside of an interface, you can simply select an element and request to duplicate it rather than building a second one from scratch. Or you can do that for an entire interface, thereby duplicating all of the elements that live inside of that one interface. So moving on to the new updates that are a little bit more involved, we're gonna start off with the calendar element. So flipping on into my Airtable database here, I've got a simple one table solution where I have three different events listed out. I have a type, I have start and end date, and I have a status not started. And bear in mind, this status can also move to in progress or complete. So let's go ahead and start building an interface and it will allow us to maybe see this data in a little bit better of a way that makes more sense for us. We're gonna start building and if you were to want to get the calendar element, we're probably gonna to wanna to see all of those different events all from that same table on the calendar at once. And so for this, more of a dashboard approach is probably gonna be beneficial. When we go into the record review or the record summary, we're diving deep into one specific record or row inside of our database. And so for a calendar, if we wanna see multiple different records across that calendar, we don't wanna go at the record level, we wanna stay at a higher level that's looking at the overall table of data. So for this, I'm gonna start with a dashboard. It asks me what table I want to look at, and of course, in our case, we only have the one table, so we'll make that selection and click Next. Now, it's going to automatically default with all of these different elements. I actually don't need any of these to demonstrate the calendar, so I can toggle them all off, and I will click Next, and we're essentially starting with a blank slate, and I will call this Calendar. I'll go ahead and finish it up here, and now inside of this interface, in the bottom left corner, when we go to add an element, we see the calendar option. This is a new option that did not exist before. So let's make that selection and drop that into our interface wherever we'd like. Now by default, we see that these events are mapped out with just one date on the calendar, and yet we had a start and end date. So in order to tweak this and customize how this data shows up, we need to go into the properties of this element, and we're gonna click on the date settings here. Once I've done that, you see that we can now decide if we are going to show just a start date or a start and an end date. Now I do wanna point out that this particular feature for calendar views inside of Airtable is part of a pro plan. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, interfaces only make this available to the pro plan. But at this point, there's been nothing stated one way or another. And so if you are not on the pro plan, you may be able to get a start and end date mapped out on your calendar interface Check it out for yourself to confirm whether or not Airtable is enabling that particular permission. 
But in my case, given that I'm in a pro plan, I know for sure this is gonna work. I have the start date here, and if I want to map to an end date, I can do that as well. You also have the option here to go to base to create a new date field. So rather than flipping back and forth, if you didn't already have an end date in your data, you can make this selection. It's gonna open up your base, allow you to create that new field, and you can keep the ball rolling on creating that perfect interface. But in our instance, I'm just gonna select end date. And once I do that, you see that these events are transpiring over an entire week as I set the dates that way. Now, in terms of position, we get to set the dates that viewers first see. So we have the option of closest record to today, or we can start with today or an exact date. So this has to do with what happens when someone accesses this interface. Where is it going to automatically move the calendar to? Either the closest record to today, today, or a specific date. Make that selection. I'll take the default here, closest to today. And then also we have the ability to alter the time scale from month to two week, all the way down to as granular as day by day. Now the last piece here, we can set it for all visits. And it mentions that if you've enabled this, the position and time scale will always reset. So every time you are accessing this, you are going to always have the ability to reset this particular time scale and position. But pretty straightforward other than that. We also have the ability to add additional date fields to this. So if you have multiple date fields, mind you, they have to be in the same table. You can also map different date fields here as well. So this is long overdue. We've had access to calendar views in Airtable, but it's brand new that it's coming in and joining us in interfaces just takes interfaces yet again to the next level, making them that much more powerful. Now it's time to talk about the button. And if you're not already using interfaces, this might be the thing that finally pushes you over the edge and convinces you that interfaces are worth building and are worth your time. So let's back up here. Remember, we are looking at our overall table view, which is showing us multiple records here. I want to actually build a different interface here. I'm gonna create a new interface, and this time I will choose either record review or record summary. The reason behind this is when you use a button in your interface, it's going to enable you to take action on a specific record. And so in order to do that, we have to have dialed into that specific record already. So buttons don't really work for us at the dashboard or high level perspective, but when we drill into a specific record, that's where buttons are gonna shine. So let's go with a record review layout here. I'll use that and again, choose your table, choose if you want to apply a filter. Like for example, I can say, I only want to see records in my interface if the status is, let's say, is not complete. So I'll make this selection here. And now I will only see those events that haven't been marked off as complete. And we're gonna get into why this is gonna be cool in just a second. But for now, keep track of the fact that we are only gonna see those events that are not complete. Now I'll click next here and we'll move on to the next stage. I'll bring all of this information in for now. So all of the different fields in my table, I will bring into my interface and I will click next. And let's just call this button. Give it a description if you'd like, and we're gonna click finish. Now coming back down to the bottom left corner where we can add an element, I will select all elements and when I scroll down, I will find now at the very bottom, the option to put a button into my interface. So let's just go ahead and slide this up here. And we can allow this button to take actions on a particular record. Again, it has to be the record that we have selected for this particular instance. So in our case, we see here that we have the different events. These are the different records in our table. And as we select through them, we will be able to take action on whatever record we have selected. Now, the button can update fields. This is different from an automation. When we build an automation, we can work with external tools or we can take action on other records, other tables, all kinds of stuff. However, when you're using the button in an interface, it's taking an action up to five actions on a field for the record in question. So for example, we have a status right here of not started. If I select this button, maybe what I want it to do is update that status to started. So let's go to this and say, well, we're gonna update a field. What field? It's gonna be that status field. What are we gonna set it to? Let's say we move it from not started to in progress. I'll make that selection here. 
So, so far, when somebody pushes this button, what it's going to do is move the status to in progress. Maybe we had something else as well, like the name, we want to change it to updated, for example. I don't think this is an actual example that you would actually use, but I just want to demonstrate how this particular function works. So what I've done here is I've assigned two different updated fields that are going to be updated at the time that the button is pushed. Now we can also configure what the appearance of this button is. In order to do that, we'll come down to the bottom section and we can change the text here. I can say move to in progress. And you'll notice that I'll need to make the button a little bit bigger in order to be able to read all of that. But there we go. And I can change the color around as well. Let's keep it at blue for now. And then the last piece here is our option to, upon the button being pushed, automatically move to the next record. This would be really good for, let's say you have a review process where you need to go through multiple things. You can just click that button and it's reviewed, it's approved, and it moves on to the very next record that's awaiting approval. So this feature can really help streamline anything that has an approval process. Let's go ahead and allow it to move to the next record upon selection. So we'll go ahead and save this up and publish this interface, and we're gonna to go to the live version of the interface now. Here inside the actual version, we are sitting here on type two, status of not started. And when I click this button, we know it's gonna take two actions. We're going to update the name of this event. It's currently called event two, and it will be renamed as updated. And we're going to move this status to in progress. So let's go ahead and make that selection. As soon as I do that, you saw many things happen all at once. This record was just changed in terms of the name. It was changed to updated. I also will, when I click back here, notice that the status has been updated. And lastly, you'll notice that we were moved down from this top event down to the next record, which is in our case, event three. Again, if I push that button all in one flow, we see that the name of this record back here was updated. And if we go back to it, of course, we'll see the status was updated to in progress. And we were lastly moved down to the third record. So if I go back up to these records, we'll see that those statuses are now updated. And of course, if I were to click it again, well, it's just gonna update the status again. So the example I built here might be a little silly because we changed it to a status of in progress. And of course, that's an action we would only wanna take one time, but you get the idea. You can do a lot with this because it's going to take that action automatically up to five actions on that particular record. So you can update statuses, mark things as approved, check boxes, change text, whatever you can dream of. This button is gonna help you do it. And you saw how easily it came together. We didn't even have to build an automation to do it. I hope you got a ton of value out of this video and that you are excited to start using interfaces more. If you have any questions, drop them below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want more information on no code and automation. And I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.